Label all tick marks in the following grids and state the coordinates of each point. What you see here is called a trigonometric coordinate grid. A trigonometric coordinate grid can be used to graph trigonometric functions. The x-axis is used to express angles, so we can label tick marks as exact value radians. The independent variable in trigonometric functions is often theta, so the x-axis is called the theta axis. The y-axis is measured in regular numbers. Before we can find the coordinates of the points, we need to express each tick mark on the x-axis as an exact value radian. The first thing we need to do is count the number of ticks to the first label tick. In this case, pi is the sixth tick. Pi is being split into six equal intervals. Divide pi by six to get pi over six radians, or 30 degrees. This means the ticks are spaced pi over six radians apart. Now that we know the ticks are spaced pi over six radians apart, we can label each tick. You may wish to use the unit circle for help in labeling the radians. Finally, label the rest of the ticks. Now label the coordinates of each point. The first point is located at negative 5 pi over 6, 3. The second point is located at negative pi over 6, negative 4. And finally, the third point is located at 7 pi over 6, 1. Now we'll move on to part B. We need to label the tick marks on the x-axis. Count the number of ticks to the first label tick. In this case, pi is the fourth tick. Pi is being split into four equal intervals. Divide pi by 4 to get pi over 4 radians, or 45 degrees. This means the ticks are spaced pi over 4 radians apart. Now that we know the ticks are spaced pi over 4 radians apart, we can label each tick. You may wish to use the unit circle for help in labeling the radians. Finally, label the rest of the ticks. On the y-axis, it takes 5 ticks to get to 20. Twenty divided by five equals four, so the ticks are spaced four units apart. Now label the coordinates of each point. The first point is located at negative three pi over four, negative twelve. The second point is located at pi over four, sixteen. And finally, the third point is located at 7 pi over 4, negative 8. Now we'll move on to part C. We need to label the tick marks on the x-axis. Count the number of ticks to the first label tick. In this case, 8 pi is the fourth tick. Eight pi is being split into four equal intervals. Divide eight pi by four to get two pi radians, or 360 degrees. This means the ticks are spaced two pi radians apart. Now 
Now that we know the ticks are spaced two pi radians apart, we can label each tick. On the y-axis, it takes three ticks to get to 12. Twelve divided by three equals four, so the ticks are spaced four units apart. Now label the coordinates of each point. The first point is located at negative six pi eight. The second point is located at negative two pi negative eight. And finally, the third point is located at 4 pi, negative 4. Now we'll move on to part D. We need to label the tick marks on the x-axis. Count the number of ticks to the first labeled tick. In this case, 4 pi is the eighth tick. Pi is being split into eight equal intervals. Divide 4 pi by 8 to get pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. This means the ticks are spaced pi over 2 radians apart. Now that we know the ticks are spaced pi over 2 radians apart, we can label each tick. You may wish to use the unit circle for help in labeling the radians. On the y-axis, it takes four ticks to get to 40. Forty divided by four equals 10, so the ticks are spaced 10 units apart. Now label the coordinates of each point. The first point is located at negative 3 pi 10. The second point is located at 3 pi over 2, negative 30. And finally, the third point is located at 5 pi over 2, negative 20.